hi guys welcome back to my channel hope you guys are all doing well i know it's been a long time since i filmed a sit down video i just really wanted to kind of check in with you guys and kind of film a sort of reflection review about how my first year went um especially as i'm about to start my final year of pa school slash med school however you want to say it I wanted to give you guys the tea on what resources i actually did use what things i bought and i didn't touch at all I wanted to kind of make this an informative video just so some of you guys that are about to start soon or you have started already it will make it easier to kind of know how to allocate your money and um, what to not waste your money on or waste your time on and hopefully help you succeed in passing your first year as well if you aren't already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe before you continue watching yeah let's get straight into this video in terms of first year for me my experience of first year was that it was pretty intense firstly we had three weeks of kind of like induction we learned you know like basic life support moving and handling a lot of training for our local areas trust and soon after that we were straight into the content we actually started with the musculoskeletal system which i think was personally a good place to start because you have to know a lot about anatomy felt like it was a good foundation um for us to start on it did feel pretty intense because you know you had to kind of get your anatomy down within two weeks which kind of seemed impossible so yeah we were pretty much thrown into the deep end in terms of like the content that we were learning it was very very much you know, getting straight into it so every week we would have lectures monday to friday on thursdays we would always have placement in primary care so at a gp practice that is kind of local to the area most of our lectures were kind of just structured as like one hour two hour three hours depending on you know who is taking it um whenever we started a new um system we always got an anatomy and physiology lecture a lot of the time we also had dissection sessions we also got lectures from a lot of um doctors consultants registrars um so many different people so we could also have you know some sort of clinical relevance to what we were learning which was really good my uni the way we do it is that our first year is strictly um theoretical except for when we have um placement once a week um, and i absolutely love that format because i feel like it's very very good to kind of have all of that knowledge done and kind of going out of the way first and then when you go into placement in your second year you kind of have a good foundation and things start to click because you know things that you've learned in theory you can now see it practically in front of you when you have a patient that could be suffering from a particular condition we had two exams we had a 100 um question single best answer paper sba our exam got brought forward to june it was initially meant to be in july but it was brought forward to june and again we had an 100 question sba and then as well as that at the end of july we had a six station oski um and by the grace of god i passed everything which was really really exciting it was due to have a mock oski end of march but that didn't happen things were going to plan we would have had a mock oski before we actually had an initial oski thankfully for the whole of july before our actual oski we had kind of like a clinical skills block so we came in we brushed up on a few things we got to practice oskis we also got to learn certain things like suturing so um yeah that's pretty much how my first year went i don't think you can kind of prepare yourself for how intense it is i think all you can do is kind of just roll with the punches and kind of just you know try to stay afloat i would be lying if i said that i didn't have moments where i kind of you know just felt like i can't do this anymore but i think that's natural that's where having a very strong and solid support system comes into place not just your family but also the people that you're actually studying with i always talk about you know finding one person that you can kind of bounce off with finding one person that you can study with finding that one person or a group of people that you kind of like are like-minded um, and you know you guys can push each other to kind of be better that's pretty much a quick recap on how my first year went so some of the things I bought was um, the Oxford Clinical Handbook. I bought Top 100 Drugs. I bought Netta's Anatomy Flashcards. I'll leave a picture of it here. And then I also bought Oski Cases and Mark Scheme Books. So those are the only things that I bought. I didn't spend money on anything else till much later. But initially before I started the course. In terms of what I didn't use, the one thing I would say that I wouldn't really advise anyone to buy because there's other ways you can kind of learn. Um, is the Netters Anatomy flashcards 
for me personally i didn't really use it as much as i thought i would i reached for it here and there but in terms of you know how much i thought i would refer to it i didn't really use it that much and that's just because i found that i could learn anatomy in other ways and other ways kind of works for me i basically think that i could have done without it basically is what i'm trying to say i could have done without buying next to anatomy flashcard i think it was like 27 pounds it's very big you can't really take it around with you as well it's not something that you can take to uni every single day so that's another thing that is a bit you know annoying about it and that's probably why i didn't reach for it as much is because it's not portable however one thing i will say is that when i did buy it i got an online version and that is something that i have been using i know that i got it because i i had purchased actual physical um box of it um but i'm not sure if you can get it separately as just a digital version if you can i would 100 percent suggest getting it because i do think it is a very very good resource to have but in terms of something that you need um and something that you need physically i personally wouldn't really advise in terms of the resources that i use i'm going to start with books first and i'm going to go on to online resources websites apps all of that kind of stuff let's start with this top 100 drugs which is basically a book on the top 100 drugs it basically does what it says in the tin what i like about this book that it summarizes things very very well don't know if you guys can see literally get all the information that you need to know in a spread and this book is a5 it's not big at all um so it's something that you can take around um easily very rarely have i not been able to find a particular drug um i just think it's really good it's straight to the point um it tells you everything you need to know it even has a bit too much information and it's still um, fits you know in this in this double page spread and all the books that i buy i always purchase all my books from amazon i don't get it from anywhere else this book oski cases and mark scheme so when i initially bought this book um it wasn't what i thought it was <laughs> so i thought it was an oski book and it basically had all the examinations and stuff like that but it wasn't and then i was kind of like regretting buying it but i did not realize that this would be a book that i would be reaching for every single time um, and when it came to OSCE revision, this book was a lifesaver. What I like about this book is that it gives you OSCE scenarios. You get scenarios just like it would be in OSCE. You get your two minute like sort of spiel that you would get at the beginning that you can read. And then whoever's playing the patient, they have everything they need to know. Um, as like a little script and then also at the back it has a mark scheme so whoever's marking you it will tell you you know how many points to give if something particularly was mentioned um and then also you can kind of use the mark scheme as also a sort of checklist so you kind of know what to make sure you need to say i can't recommend this book enough i absolutely love it we all reached for it a lot when it came to oscar revision i would say um you can buy it closer to when you actually start oscar revisions in terms of like when you first start school it's not something that you need to purchase straight away but when it comes to you know learning examinations practicing your oskies this book is absolutely amazing next book i'll talk about is the oxford handbook of clinical medicine it's you know bread and butter i would say this book is very good but it's meant to be a handbook it's meant to be quick summaries quick information it's not it's not meant to be anything too in depth i didn't reach for it as much as everyone kind of hyped it up to be in terms of like your first year when you're learning theory it doesn't go into enough depth but in terms of you know something that you can have when you're in the hospital at placement i use this book a lot when i was doing my primary care placement i would say that this is more of a book that comes in handy for placement not so much you know learning the syllabus and kind of um your day-to-day -day lecturing just because it doesn't go into as much detail but this book has everything it's just an all-round good book there's not really much you can say about the clinical um handbook i know some people in my class they got the oxford handbook um, oxford handbook of general medicine a lot of people kind of found that that was a bit more helpful than the clinical medicine one general practice one is formatted a bit different and it kind of looks a bit clearer clinical handbook you can be searching for a condition on this page and it kind of just mentions it in like a little random paragraph so you kind of have to like search a bit when it comes to the clinical medicine one however it's still a book that i would recommend it's an amazing book especially on placement another book that i got and i got this much later on and i actually got it as a gift from my dear friend who is also a pa in emergency medicine she bought me this book which is called the unofficial guide to passing oskies and i think this book is absolutely amazing what i love about this book is that it literally breaks down examinations bit by bit and also it gives you pictures when you're doing a lot of musculoskeletal examinations if you don't know what you're doing at first you've got you're going to rely on pictures and videos and stuff i think it's kind of laid out very well it's very easy to kind of work around um there's another oski book that i know some people in my course got which is called the oski stop 
in terms of buying both i don't think you need to buy both i think it's one or the other it just depends on how you like your stuff formatted if you want an oski book that has lots of pictures it's colorful if you want an oski book that's very colorful it has pictures um yeah it, it, it's kind of you know very um beginner friendly you can learn examination just by reading it if you didn't know anything about it this book is really good what i like personally like about oski stock books sometimes is that it kind of just gives you the examination as a checklist you sometimes you just want to see what you need to do um all at once so i think if you're trying to get an oski book after you know your you know the examination you know it you've seen it in person or you've watched a video and you just want a book where it has it all together in one place um, and it just tells you what you need to make sure you're doing then i would say the oski stop is a very good book for that but i don't think in terms of buying both i don't think you absolutely need to buy both you guys know my friend Tatanda, she has the oski stop book and i have this one and we both just share it like she's always trying to say that she wants to buy this one and i'm just not going to let her buy it because i just don't think it makes sense i think you know if you have someone that kind of has one accessible for you then i think um you don't need to buy both of them and have it yourself i definitely think it's one or the other it's just down to preference um, and how you like to learn but that's just my opinion i would say if and there's anyone on your course that might have purchased it already or even if you have it in your library or your tutors have access to it i would say look at it first and see which one you want to get because these books are quite pricey you do want to make sure that you're buying you know you're getting the one that you absolutely like the most another tip that i would say is try and get your friends and family to buy stuff for you when it's your birthday ask for books because books are pricey and if you're like me i don't like secondhand books there's just something about secondhand books that kind of puts me off i just feel like people don't use books how i would use books so i can just imagine like someone like pick, <laughs> picking their nose um while they open a page i just think that's disgusting so i would personally like to just have um my own new book i know that i'm the only person that's used it another book that i used that i got from my uni is this um dermatology handbook i know you can find it online i'm not too sure how much it costs because as i said it was given to me by my uni i just think it's a really good book just because when it comes to derm it's very much a you know you know it when you see it kind of situation i just love how this book is very simple straight to the point the only con about this book is that almost every single condition um the picture that you get is on caucasian skin if you're trying to diagnose someone of darker skin tone someone that's black asian other ethnic minorities that are of darker skin tone you might not necessarily know how to diagnose what you're looking for just because there aren't any pictures that include um darker skin tones which i think is a very very um huge flaw in this book but apart from that i think this book is very good in terms of like learning the basics of certain dermatology conditions in terms of which online resources i used i did a lot of my studying online how i typically study is that i kind of worked through the matrix and kind of made little summary pages on each condition and i did it on one note before i got an ipad and then when i got an ipad i just started doing it on my ipad and i started doing it on good notes and i also got an apple pencil as well for each condition i would basically write definition of the condition etiology risk factors signs and symptoms investigation and management and i'll do that for each condition so in terms of online tools website i went on the most and i am not just saying this they literally this is not a sponsored video they're not paying me to say this um osmosis hands down i used osmosis so much in terms of understanding a condition that you've just been put in front of you you've never heard of it before you just want a good summary osmosis has almost every condition that is on the matrix you will find it on osmosis um, I'm a visual learner so I love to watch videos um, and I just like how it kind of breaks it down and it just makes it look very simple for you. One thing I would say about osmosis is that when it comes to investigations and management I would always say always refer back to nice CKS or some form of British website just because osmosis is you know um, US based so a lot of the things are tailored to their American students but in terms of understanding the condition, the pathophysiology, all of that kind of basic stuff it's pretty much the same so the investigation and management is also pretty much the same but in terms of you know clarifying what is first line in terms of management i do think just always make sure that you're double checking and referring to some form of 
British um, medical website, like nice guidelines basically. If you don't want to pay for osmosis, they have a ton of free videos on YouTube as well. They do give you a free trial, so you're able to try it for two weeks, see how you feel before you want to commit. But I know at the moment they're doing 50% off, so I would definitely say snag it when you can. It is quite pricey, but it's worth every penny, honestly, it is worth the money. Another tool that I used online in terms of learning anatomy is a website called Teach Me Anatomy. I really like how it kind of breaks down certain parts of the body. It just kind of makes it very like simple and easy. The one thing I don't like is that sometimes I feel like it breaks down parts of the body a bit too, too much and you kind of just want to see everything on one page. In terms of learning anatomy, having a good basic foundation, um, not, it's not even a basic foundation, having a good understanding of anatomy and what you're studying and also clinical relevance and knowing what could go wrong in this particular part of the body, Teach Me Anatomy is absolutely great for that. Website I tried to use for anatomy when I first started but I didn't bother renewing is KenHub. KenHub is good, it quizzes you, you can see pictures. KenHub is very good for just like testing yourself on anatomy. Teach Me Anatomy is very good for learning and understanding um, anatomy but if you just want it somewhere where you can test yourself you know it will show you different parts of the body ask you what it is Ken Hub is very good for that it's just very pricey and also the free trial is like 48 hours or something ridiculous it's just like really short I just didn't bother renewing it I did it for one month and I just kind of left it at that I might possibly buy it again for a month just so I can kind of like refresh myself on anatomy especially as I'm about to start placement in terms of clinical skills um, and learning clinical skills and kind of polishing it up. Geeky Medics is absolutely amazing for it. Any examination, any procedure, you're bound to find a Geeky Medics video on it. It's free on YouTube, all the videos are there. I know the app, some things you have to pay for. I didn't download the app, I strictly accessed it on YouTube and then I'll go on the website sometimes if I wanted a checklist or if I wanted you know a written version of how you do certain things. Geeky is absolutely amazing when it comes to clinical skills. Learning it, refining it, polishing it, it's absolutely amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. Two other people I want to talk about that are on YouTube as well is a guy called Armando. He has handwritten um, videos about you know certain conditions and stuff as well. I think I prefer Osmosis just because it was a bit more colourful, a bit more engaging. But I know Armando and Osmosis are actually partnered with each other. He's an absolutely amazing resource as well. Again, it's free. If you want to learn certain conditions, um, he goes into a lot of details and he breaks things down in a way that just makes sense. And then another person on YouTube that I really, really like, their YouTube channel is called Ninja Nerds. I absolutely love them because that is how I somewhat began to understand ECGs. They have like a 40 or 50 minute video on ECG where they literally break everything down step by step. If you don't watch any other video by Ninja Nerds, I would highly recommend watching their ECG video. Um, if you're just not understanding it. And it's also pretty cool because one of the guys that are, actually runs the channel and actually, you know, does the tutorials, he's actually studying to become a physician assistant, which is really cool. In terms of learning the conditions that are on the matrix, the resources that I use the most, patient info, the professional website. There's a one for, you know, just patients and then there's one for professionals absolutely love the professional website so clear and also bmj practice i didn't get it till i think like june may or june you have to either have access to it from your university if you work for the nhs you can get access to it which is how i got access to it apart from that you have to pay and i do think it is quite pricey but it's not something that i had access to um pretty early on i wish i did because it's absolutely amazing i think it's quite similar to um, patient info the professional website it just depends on how you like your information and um, formatted i know a lot of people always say you know go on nice guidelines refer to nice guidelines but on popular opinion, I don't actually like Nice Guidelines. I don't like the way it's formatted. I don't think it's very user friendly, personally, but I always do refer to it. But I just, I just don't like the way Nice Guidelines is like structured. I don't like the way it's formatted. It's just not clear at all, personally. The BMJ best practice is way more clearer in terms of, you know, what first line is and stuff like that. In terms of how I prepped for exams, pass medicine past medicine past medicine it is like 12 pounds for the year it is cheap and it's amazing past medicine i cannot recommend it enough a lot of the time the questions that you get in exams are very very similar to past medicine so it breaks it down into 
um, what year you're in in medical school. When I first started preparing for my exam in February, I did final year. I was failing everything. I just it just wasn't making sense. It was way too hard. So I would recommend using years one to three for first year, and then when it comes to final year, um, using the final year one because it goes into a bit more depth. I cannot recommend it enough. It's scientifically proven that the best way to kind of pass exams and to learn knowledge is by testing yourself, and that is absolutely what pass medicine does. It tests you on things. If you get certain questions wrong, it will bring that question back until you get it right. And then sometimes it even spaces out how often it tests you on it. It has a exam time, like countdown timer, which is super triggering. I hate looking at it, um, but <laughs> I guess it is a good feature to have. But past medicine, I cannot recommend it enough. I always, always, always use it. When it comes to exam revision, just, you know, preparing myself or also testing myself on certain conditions absolutely good also it has this thing called a passport where you know if there's a particular condition you want to be tested on you can just write test and i don't know hypertension and it will only ask you questions about that condition in terms of apps there's only two apps that i would recommend that i personally used med calc very very good in terms of when you want to calculate certain patients against scoring systems like i don't know glaucoma coma score um chad Vask scores um what else my mind's gone blank it's just a very very good app in terms of having you know certain scoring systems and stuff all in one place another app i would recommend is the bnf um and it's absolutely free you can type any 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 drug and it will come up it will tell you side effects tell you what it is it's basically like having a bnf in your pocket and it's free so you can't really go wrong with that in terms of stationery one thing i made sure i got myself was a diary um, just because you need to have everything in one place and I think it will come in handy again for placement just so I can always record my hours you know I can always record what ward I was on what hospital I'm in just so I have it all in one place because when it comes to placement year recording your hours and staying on top of it and just being organized is very important because at the end of the day you need to make sure that you're completing your hours you can go physical or you can go digital I kind of prefer physical diary I don't know why I just there's just something that's really nice about kind of like writing it pen and paper another thing i would always recommend is a placement book I never write any patient identifiable information in my placement book just because it's a book that i have around in my house and stuff like that i always write what day it is what placement day i've completed and each patient that walks in the door i will write gender age um what their presented complaint was how the gp handled it if i learned something new that day i would write it in that book but if i wanted to go and research something when i got home i would always write it in that book i just think it's really something good to have um especially if you want to kind of be a serious student you always want to make sure that you're solidifying um what you've learned at placement a placement book is something good to have another piece of stationery i would always recommend is to kind of get a, a pocket folder so my pocket folder is literally full of all my examinations it protects it it makes it accessible to have when it comes to practicing oskis i always reach for this book this book is always with me um and i got this on amazon and this one is a 100 page one because i have so many different pieces of paper um but i absolutely just love this book because it just makes everything very simple and easy for me to access um, and to look at i just kind of like how it kind of keeps all my examinations and all my leaflets and handouts very very organized when it comes to stationery i will always say always paper versus paperless um to be fair you can do both i think i do a bit of both um but when i initially started i was very much paper pencil paper pens always have that with you and i always had highlighters how i always used to take my notes was in this dotted a5 paper for each semester i had a different notebook if you want to go paperless then i would suggest getting an ipad which is something that i got i don't have it here with me i've got an ipad and an apple pencil pretty much closer towards the end of my first year i just kind of like how everything is in one place you're more likely to kind of not lose your digital notes whereas with your paper notes to be fair i would never lose my paper notes either but your paper notes you kind of have everything in different places but with your digital notes it's all in one place the app that i use is good notes but i know some people use notability it just depends on what kind of person you are i know some people use notability on my course but um i like good notes the only difference that i've pretty much seen with good notes and notability is that you can't record um as you're taking notes but that's something that i can live without I'm not really someone that records lectures anyway i'd say figure out whether you want to go paperless or if you don't mind paper 
um, and kind of roll with it or if you want a hybrid of both I know placement I'm gonna have this with me but I'm also gonna have my iPad as well but in terms of like being on the walls and you know doing ward runs and stuff like that I just think it looks a bit more like professional but yeah um, hopefully this video helps just stay on top of your work try not to panic you are more than capable of doing this course the fact that you're on it and that you've gotten through shows that you possess the skills that are needed to be able to be successful on this course do not compare yourself to others and find what works best for you find what routine and just stick to it and just you know milk it for everything it's okay if you have many breakdowns it's okay if you don't complete as much as you want to do just as long as the next day you get back onto it again what i always tell myself there's people that have done it long before me they're practicing they're just like me so if they can do it i can do it too and that's just what i always tell myself to encourage myself um because it is tough um and i feel like people say it all the time but it is tough it's not impossible um so yeah i just want to hopefully encourage you guys yeah. but yeah i hope this video has been helpful please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it also comment down below letting me know what videos you want me to do as well tomorrow is my first day of second year and it's a mix of zoom and face-to-face -face lessons the week after that i start placement which is exciting i have placement for the whole year and my first rotation is in general medicine which i'm super excited about so um yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you're not following me on my socials follow me there because i will obviously be updating you guys about my placement and stuff like that if you want to ask me any questions feel free to dm me i do get around to it eventually it might not be you know quick but i do get around to answering all my dms um and yeah i'm wishing you guys all the best for everyone that's just started and i'll see you guys in my next video